Today I'd like to show you the Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus. You'd think they could have came up with a little easier name to pronounce, but that's what it is. And the first thing I wanted to point out is that this box was a lot smaller than I expected. Right here I have an iPhone 7 Plus next to it. And as you can see, it's almost exactly the same height and it's squared. So that gives you some idea of just how small the box is. I've had a Unify PC set up to run my network and to also run Unify uh, video. But this I thought was really interesting because if it does what it claims it'll do, it'll actually free up the PC that I've been using, which is uh, the 2015 Intel NUC i7 for me to do other things with it. And the cost of this was far less than me buying another PC to replace the NUC because I'm in a situation where I needed to either get another PC or free up some resources. And so that led me to this unit here. So let's take a look at it. And I will say too, it's got some weight to it. It uh, feels pretty solid even inside the box here. There is a little bit of documentation showing you some of the, uh, the basics and telling you what apps you will need. This I kind of like the idea that it came with some window stickers. So kind of like uh, the days of ADT, we're just seeing something like this in itself was a form of security. So I kind of like that idea. And pull a little tab. And let's see what we got here. Again, this feels very much like an Apple product, not only in the way it's packaged, but even the material here being the aluminum in black. On the website, it says that it is user upgradable up to five terabytes. So as you see here on the bottom, there's actually a hard drive release key. So I'm gonna press that. Whoa. One thing I did not realize and I guess I should have by the size, is that it is not a three and a half drive system. It's a laptop two and a half drive, two, two and a half inch drive system. And the drive that comes with it is a Toshiba. It doesn't say what speed the drive is, but I'm gonna guess it's probably a slow 5400 RPM drive. And it looks like it's a pretty simple replacement. I'm not even sure I see any screws here. So there must be something holding it in. There must be a release latch somewhere. I'll have to look that up. Nothing obvious, but anyway, clearly that is a no big deal to replace or upgrade. What I decided to do when I decided to purchase this is just start out with the drive that's in it and not worry about upgrading it right away. I'm currently using a six terabyte drive with my uh, PC setup, and it really would have been great to keep that same capacity. And maybe there's a way to get back to that later. So let's uh, let's put this back in. It just snaps back in. Now, interesting to note that there is no power adapter included, and what you have is USB power, and I know there's PoE power over Ethernet. And what I'm hoping is this one right here can be used to add another drive. But again, I'm gonna have to look that up. Time to plug it in and see what it can do. So the first problem I ran into was not having the proper USB charger to use to power the device. Apparently there's a standard I was unaware of called Quick Charge 2.0, and you need a special adapter that supports that standard in order to power the device. So I figured that out pretty quick once I plugged it in, that the charger I was using was underpowered and a quick trip to Amazon, and I was able to find what I needed to power the device. Once I had it powered up, it was no problem to type in the correct IP and go to the login page. As usual, you will have to bypass the security warning, but since the device is on your local network, that shouldn't be a problem. Once logged in, I selected the network setup and the first thing that happened was it recognized it needed a firmware update and allowed me to download that right away. 
While that was upgrading, I switched over to my current unified network and went to one of the backups and downloaded that to the PC I was working on. This would allow me to import all of the current settings that I have and save me from having to set everything up all over again from scratch. And at this point, I'm not sure if I did everything in the correct order because I did run into some problems. After downloading the backup, I went into my old setup and chose to forget each of the devices on the network. My assumption was you're going to have to adopt them and they need to be available. But my first several attempts, I had issues with getting things to finish adopting. To be honest, I'm still not sure what I did wrong and what I eventually did correctly. This is the first time I have had to move my Unify setup from one setup to another. So maybe I should have read the instructions a little more, but it seemed like it was a pretty straightforward process. But apparently I, I must have missed a certain step. But eventually I did get it up and running and I was able to finally change the default IP for the gateway to the IP that I wanted to use. That was also uh, another sticking point for me. Next, I logged into the cloud key itself. Since I have only used the software on a PC so far, this was an interesting thing for me to see the difference in performance. I have to say the interface worked very well it was much more visual than using just the software directly on a PC. With that working, I went into Unify Protect from the Cloud Key home screen, and instead of importing all of my settings from the system I currently have running, I decided to set it up as a new system. While this did not take quite as long as setting up the network, I did run into a few issues with adoption and realized pretty quickly that of course, it could not find a camera that was already being managed by another controller. So I had to go back to my original controller that was running on a PC and release the cameras so that they could be readopted into the new system. As soon as I did that, it seemed to work fine. I was able to name the cameras properly. It quickly checked and downloaded new firmware for the cameras as well. So once the cameras were working, I opened up each camera, went in and tweaked some of the settings, and tried to get everything back to pretty much the way I had it before. Since I only have two cameras right now, that did not take me very long. Now here's where things get a little bit interesting. I have had the cloud key on for about two to three hours at this point, and when I logged back into the performance screen, I noticed that memory was in the red, and in fact it's just 1% away from being completely used up. To me, this didn't seem like a normal situation. So the first thing I did was I rebooted the unit and then I recorded a time lapse to see what would actually happen and how long it would take to get back up to the red zone again. So here you see I restarted it, then I started to record uh, what was going on and I stepped away for a few hours. And this has sped up quite a bit, but as you can see, it started at a reasonable level and a little bit at a time it just inched right back up to that danger zone again. Now my first concern is that maybe the cloud key is underpowered because I'm thinking if this thing is supposed to support 20 cameras and I've only got two this might end up being a problem in the long run. Even after turning off some of the more advanced features and networking, I realized it was going to keep running at around 98%. So a trip to the forums led me to a few threads that I'll show here. One is that I'm not the only one having this issue. And two, it appears that the issue is related to how Linux uses the memory. Apparently this is a normal situation. I will say that even when it's at 98, 99%, the unit itself and the responsiveness of the GUI, whether it be on the web page or through the iPhone app, is totally fine. You don't ever get the sense that this thing is a slug. And if anything, the performance on the cloud key seems to be a lot better than running on an Intel NUC i7, which is kind of shocking. And I'll show you some of that when I get into the application on the phone. One thing I really like about the hardware is the display showing what's going on on the network. It's pretty useful information. Um, I don't think I'll use it much only because 
this is in a networking cabinet and it's not really going to be visible most of the time but I can still appreciate how clean it is and how at a glance you can confirm some very important bits of information and I'm, I'm assuming if things were going wrong or there are errors to report they will also display on the screen. And now for the fun part let's take a look at the app that works with the cloud key and this is probably the thing that really sells it more than anything. First of all, it connects pretty quickly over a local network because the first thing it tries to do is connect uh, over the local network if you happen to be on it. However, if you're on another Wi-Fi or you're on uh, LTE, it still connects fairly quickly, but it does take an extra second or two. If you're trying to get into your cameras very quickly, it can be a little bit frustrating, but um, overall it, it's not too bad. And in this case here, you'll see I actually have four cameras and these, these are all live streaming right now. And what's nice is you can actually see all of them live. So this is kind of a multi-cam setup. And if I click on any camera, it loads it and it also shows me the history and this is really the, the best part right here unify came up with a proprietary codec that helps them really uh make the video very scrubbable and as you can see here i'm just flicking through and it's going through hours at a time and what it does is it drops the quality while you're scrubbing but as soon as you stop, it kind of it brings back up the full quality. And if I turn it to the side, I get a larger view, but I still get the little slider on the side here. And of course, I can zoom in and even scrub with it zoomed in. You can see there the quality drops until you hit play, and then it turns back up. So to me, this is one of the best reasons to get the cloud key because when I had my Unify video set up, scrubbing was always uh, the issue. And this is by far um, the reason to get it. It allows you to quickly jump to different dates as well. So if you just click on the date on the bottom, you can pick different month, year, and it'll instantly jump to that. And you can still scrub and get the same effects. And finally, you can actually save a clip, but it is a little bit limiting. So let's just say I want to export something I've seen here and I want to save it to my iPhone. Automatically, it gives you a start and stop thumbnail as well as the markers here to allow you to kind of fine tune it and watch what you're doing. The problem is there is a 10 minute limit to this. So if I grab the bottom one, let's say I grab the top one, and I drag it up, you'll see as soon as I get to 10 minutes, it stops and it tells me I've hit the maximum limit. Most of the time, 10 minutes covers it, but if you really want to save several hours worth, uh, for example, I had recorded a well, what I expected to be a time lapse of building uh, a set of bunk beds. So I recorded for the whole day, but getting out the entire day so that I could create a time lapse from it was pretty much impossible uh, unless I wanted to tediously go through and grab 10 minute clips and uh, hope to str string them all together later. It just it was not very practical, so I ended up not even doing it. But once you select it, you just click the little download button and it instantly starts and it's pretty quick, especially on a, a local network. While you're in the camera view too, if you click on the settings icon, there are some other adjustments you can make on the camera. Um, just the, the, what you would expect for setting zones and uh, recording settings and quality and things like that. So that's pretty to, easy to do on a camera by camera basis. While I've nitpicked some of the other parts of this setup. This right here is what makes it worth it to me and I'm looking forward to adding uh, additional cameras in the near future.